Good morning. Good morning. It's Morning Devos with Jen. And this morning I have a special guest. This is Dale. Good morning, Jen. It is Wednesday, April 23rd, 24th, 24th. And it's cold. It's cold out this morning. So good morning. We have our coffee. And so we'll just wait a second. We started a little earlier uh, this morning. So as you all are coming in, I hope that you have your coffee and that you're slowly opening your eyes <laughs> and that you'll be planning on going outside this morning or sometime today. But make sure you bundle up because it is cold. So good morning, Brenda. We're glad that you're joining you. We're you, we're joining you. You're joining us. We have coffee. I might need a little bit more coffee today. Mm-hmm. And so some of you will remember seeing Dale before. He is uh, not only my friend and a co-pastor, he's also an author who wrote um, As I Walk. Though I Walk. Though I Walk. So close. So close. Good morning, <laughs> Paul and Sue. We're glad that you joined us. Good. Yes, Brenda, it is a chilly morning. <clears throat> and so uh, Dale has been uh, still writing and creating and so this month is poetry month and he wrote a poetry book so let me hold this up to you so you can see it there we go daytime moons good morning donna and good morning elizabeth um and so this is a poetry book that he has just finished writing uh, well about a year it's okay been, yeah and uh i right we've talked about being uh, poetry month and so i uh, have signed copy and I thought okay it's April I need to read it it's poetry month good morning Ellen and good morning Leanne um, and so many of the verses uh, poems were fascinating to me some I and it's poetry right so some I totally got and was like oh that's so good and then others I was like I have no idea what that means um, <laughs> but that's what poetry does right that's, that's what poetry does and what's interesting is okay so we're at network if you're wondering Jen where are you this morning uh, good morning Stephanie and good morning Lynn um, this morning we're in Oshawa because I am at a network meeting Dale is a, a fellow pastor in my network and uh, yesterday uh, uh, another co-pastor of ours led a devotional on on leadership and how to lead well. Good morning, Amy. Uh, and the three things he said was joy. Make sure you have mm -hmm. sources of joy. And secondly, uh, and to celebrate things. And I, I think I encourage you guys to, to celebrate things. Uh, so we need joy. We also need faith. But the third thing he said to make that all come together was vulnerability. Yeah. And uh, creativity, I believe we are we were created by God to be creative but to be creative we have to be vulnerable mm -hmm. and so that's the question I want I want Dale to talk about this morning is to talk about that process of, of especially because um, Dale not only writes poems and books he also is a musician he's creative um, three-minute theology you can tune in on uh, YouTube and you can check out some of that which is very creative has lots of his drawings on it as well um, but to be creative you need to be vulnerable yeah. and if we are created to be creative to actually be everything God has created us to be we have to be creative but we have to delve into that vulnerability so I want you to talk to us a little bit about that process of being vulnerable yeah. and uh, so you can actually be everything that God is creating you to be yeah it's interesting when you say that Jen first of all hi everybody all of uh, those that have, I, I don't know all the names that Jen's been calling out, but uh, it's great to meet you all virtually like this. Um, yeah, it's interesting when you were sharing just now about vulnerability, I was thinking about songwriting because right. I do a lot of songwriting and have, you know, performed songs that I've written at various times in different settings and so on. And I do a lot of worship leading and yeah. play songs that others have written. And what I find is I, I can, you know, give me a song by Matt Redman or something and I'll play it without any sense of anxiety or, or nervousness at all. And yet, if I'm going to be playing a song publicly that I have written, right. suddenly my anxiety meter just <laughs> spikes, you know, it's like, and it's like, could you, you know, the same four chords, but it's my words this time and yeah. not Matt Redman, Redman's. And there's something about that process that you are make you you know it's like feeling exposed you're sort of exposing something yeah. that's very dear and close to who you are and you're putting it out in public and yeah. 
there is a deep piece of vulnerability to that and yet uh, I think you're right um, to be really creative and to pursue creativity as part of your discipleship and your calling in the Lord requires that vulnerability because I think there's something about creative creativity where you're 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 bringing something out of you that's that's deep in there you know a lot of the poems that I've written there a lot of the songs I write are about really personal things that I've experienced with the Lord and they're quite personal and so to bring them out and to, to kind of embody them in some way through song or through poems like that's powerful to do but it also means exposing that thing yeah. to the world and it's well scary. I'm just I'm being reminded of first uh, Corinthians 13 where it says uh, then we shall be known as yeah. we are fully known we have this deep desire to be fully known yeah. uh, but being fully known means being vulnerable because we're putting yeah. ourselves out there when we when we're creative whether it is whether it's writing or songwriting uh, whether it is um, creating a quilt, which I know a lot of you do, or you're, uh, I want to say crocheting or knitting needlework of some kind, or whether you are remodeling a car, you're doing a fixture up, or whether it's it's um, uh, creating, I want to say, a play area in your backyard for your kids. Uh, there's this element of creativity of you are, that's a little bit of who you are, yeah. which is now public for everyone to see. That also means it's public for everyone to criticize potentially but yeah. you're hoping yeah. that they'll accept it so yeah. there is this element of vulnerability and a hope that if I put a little bit of my creative self out there yeah that's gonna be okay that people will accept it Wow that's really powerful yeah so the, that idea of, of being known and, and knowing as we know like that that sort of yeah. relationship on the deepest level and, and sort of being who we really are and being known and loved for that and I think there is that that's part of the spark that drives creative effort because it's like this is who I am and I want it to be yeah to be seen and yet I'm scared for it to be seen yeah. because what if it's not acceptable and so there's that fear of shame and all of that and yet in my own life when I have done that and sort of said it you know put put a thought to work to, to paper and then shared it with the world there is something that you know the Lord meets us in that and mm. he builds deeper relationships with others through that but he also helps us to grow deeper in, in him that way yeah. that's actually the idea behind the title of the book daytime moons uh, I saw, you know, you, you know, you see the moon on the afternoon. It's like, yeah. what's it doing there? Like, it should be out at night, right? Yeah. And I saw a moon one afternoon, out in the, uh, and the, the thought was like, I often feel like that. Like, I'm in a spot I shouldn't be. Like, the, mm. the moon doesn't belong up in the sky in the day. It should be there at yeah. night. And I often have that feeling that that who I am is out of place. It doesn't mm. fit, you know. And so I tried to write this poem about feeling that way and then realizing that... Um, just like the Lord put the moon in the daytime sky for his right. purposes, those feelings of not fitting or not belonging, you know, he, he made each of us unique in that same way. Well, and what I'm, it says, so let me just read this to you. Uh, when I see the moon all pale and low, but unmistakably there in a bright blue afternoon sky, like a winkling, like a winking, Sorry, I got distracted by a bird. You guys all know that it happens to me. Um, like a winking eye hung faint and gray in a time and place it has no right to be. I remember all those times and places I myself have stood all in... Con you know what? I'm handing this over to Dale. This is his. He should be reading this. Oh, good. He brought his glasses. Uh, on seeing a daytime moon. Mm -hmm. When I see the moon, all pale and low, but unmistakably there, in a bright blue afternoon sky, like a winking eye hung faint and gray, in a time and place it has the right to be. I remember all those times and places I myself has stood, all incongruous and out of sync, like a celestial anomaly exposed by the unlikely coalescence of the lunar cycle of my heart and the diurnal rhythms of my destiny. Did he who taught the pale moon to peek out now and then on a sunlit afternoon put me here or there or there again as well to see that thing that no one thought belonged mm. 
and name the thing that no one else could see. Wow. So the thought that comes to mind is some of you are thinking, yeah, but I'm not creative. Mm -hmm. Like that's often what some people say, oh, I'm not creative. I don't, I don't write music. I don't paint. I don't draw. So I'm just not creative. That's not true. That's not true. So how would you encourage someone to explore their creativity? Well, I guess I'd say be creative about what creativity means. And, uh, um, you know, we think of the painter or the poet as the creative person. But uh, I think, uh, you know, a mother who loves their child really well is being creative yeah. because they're, they're creating something in that relationship that didn't exist before. Yeah. And, uh, um, I mean, you could... The gardener who gardens well. Yes. And the, yes. The, um, uh, the the woodworker who the construction worker who takes takes yeah. care and pains in there. Yes. Work. Like all of those things are creative because the image of God is a creative mandate. I think so. Yeah. In Genesis, God creates the world, and then He creates human beings, and then He says, "These are made in my image and likeness." And there's some, there's some connection. Did in creating the world, we're called to step into that in our own right. vocations. And so you have to sort of understand, I think, that creativity is not narrow to this very narrow kind right. of right. But, but I'd also say um, take risks, uh, you know, and, and uh, yes. you're doing the, the new things each day or no, one, one new thing a week. Yeah. You know, it's like that, I think, with creativity is, is um, step into things that you didn't think you could do. Right. Right. Or you didn't know you had that in you. Yeah. My my wife's grandmother you know, took up painting late late in life and discovered she had this latent oh. gift for painting. And um, um, for me, that's true too. Like part of my discipleship is trying new things mm. creatively and yeah. experimenting. So I hope you're hearing this right. Um, that create be creative about being creative. Yeah. Like the thing is like try new things, be vulnerable. Um, and, uh, so whether like, I'm just thinking engineers are creative, like they have to create new ways of doing things. Like yeah. I think a build, a, a bridge builder has to be creative and how are we actually going to span this ditch or water body of water? Like, and so that's also being creative. They're putting themselves out there. They're thinking through ideas. They're trying to come up with, with uh, uh, solutions to situations. That's also being creative. Um, and I think sometimes we, we can just pigeonhole creativity into um, <laughs> painting, writing, singing, like that kind of thing. But, but to actively pursue creativity is to say, God, I know that you created me to be creative. Would you help me? Would you open up opportunities for me to, to try new things, but also to be vulnerable and not to like that it has to, I think we get caught up that it has to look a certain way. Yeah. And that's what's going to make it acceptable. But really it, it comes from an outpouring of who we are in the inside and it has our fingerprints on it. Like it's a reflection of, of who we are and it doesn't have to measure up or be a certain way, but it's just an act of, of, creating what is what we're feeling or sensing on the inside to be with what we're to do in that moment another thought i'm having has to do with community and uh like at our church this over easter we had a oh, yeah. kind of an art gallery in the foyer of our church of some of the folks in our church community had each done art pieces and we put it on display and, and i think there's something about the being in a community where you're with other people who are also creative and and I think the church can be like that, you know, a space where there's opportunities to use our creative gifts to worship the Lord and mm -hmm. to express what life with the Lord is like. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, when I teach, I teach guitar lessons to my uh, niece online and I always say like, it, the song isn't a song until you've sung it for someone. Like, right. you know, you've got it. Oh. And so I'm always challenging her to sing her songs, you know, for her dad or whatever, but it's like, there's something about having a community of people that you're sharing what you've yeah. done creatively with and being that kind of community is important. And that's the tough part. That's the tough part because you're putting yourself out there, you're, you're, 
exposing your soul yeah. <clears throat> and that's where vulnerability comes in and yet we actually grow and deeper in our relationship with each other and with God when we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and that's yeah. you know when I think of, of Jesus when he says just come to me like come to me all of you are tired and, and heavy laden I will give you rest this idea of there's nothing that we can't offer to Jesus that he's going to be like oh no that's not good enough. Yeah. like he, he welcomes you just to come to him and and with that vulnerability to say, okay, Lord, this is who I am. And then he says, good, now let's walk together. And I, I just love that it's in the walking that he changes us. It's not in the coming, it's in the walking yeah. it out that he changes us to be more in his likeness. And then he uses things like creativity. And so, because you might be thinking, well, how does creativity play out in the overall of my, my discipleship, my yeah. growing in depth? But creativity creates the vulnerability that we actually get to know ourselves and allow Jesus to come in. And then he, he speaks to us in that and often it reveals those parts of ourselves of, of that I want to say are, are doing well, but maybe not so well. And so it, it yeah. is a reflection of who we are. Yeah, I have like a, my, my song book, you know, that I write all and I've kept it for... I don't know, I've probably been writing songs for 20 years or so, and so I've got hundreds of songs in there. Some are, in my estimation, some are okay, and others are awful songs, but they're just all, all over it. And when I flip through it, I can see, oh yeah, I remember writing this song because I was in a time of deep discouragement with the right. Lord, and I can see how the process of, of trying to put that in words and in music was the process that the Lord used to help me right. come through that. You know, and, and uh, I think there's something to that, that as we explore ways of being creative with God, he uses that to, to shape us as his followers. Yeah. And there's something about creativity, like creativity is taking things that don't seem to fit together and bringing them together too. It's like always, it's trying to see things from a way you haven't seen it before. And yeah. so there's something about creativity that helps you glimpse God in new ways. Yes. because you don't get just sort of stuck in the same way of thinking about God or the same way of encountering him but it's like you know the daytime moon well I, there's something going on there that helps me see God in yeah. a new way and if I can just put it into words or paint it out or whatever my creative process is I'll have a deeper perspective and a deeper appreciation of yeah. who God is yeah I hope we have encouraged you to be creative and I'm, I'm just thinking about Pastor Henry's uh, steampunk lights where he gets all the different parts of metal together and creates something that gives light and you would look at those pieces as individual pieces like you've said and then they don't seem to go together and yeah. then he creates this beautiful i want to say ornament that gives light yeah. so it's it's put together with all these different pieces for the purpose of showing light and it's just beautiful and that's exactly what you've said god can put these pieces together that we don't originally think and yet he uses it uh to shed light or to to build growth or just to reflect back on us that we can experience him more mm -hmm. so i'm i'm encouraged this morning so would you pray for us this sure. morning yeah <clears throat> lord jesus we thank you so much for your creativity mm -hmm. you are the creator god you are a God of creativity, and by your Spirit you gift us in all sorts of ways to serve you and to worship you and to um, leave our mark on your world for the better. Uh, we do confess that often we've either hidden those gifts, sprayed them in the sand, or um, used them in ways that don't honor you, but we know that you have created us in your image, and as, being, as creatures made in the image of a creative God, you have a vocation for us to use these gifts in ways that yeah. um, shine the light on you and invite others to encounter you and so would you bless us in that way now and would you inspire us by your spirit mm -hmm. to explore sing write speak draw whatever it is lord that you want us to um to do and to whatever way you want us to use our gifts that you would inspire us in those ways and use us for your glory and for your purposes, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you for joining me on this cold morning yeah, on your front step. Yeah, it's a chilly one, but that's... <laughs> so good, so good. So uh, 
daytime moons or uh, though I walk which is on Amazon mm -hmm. so if you haven't read it yet I encourage you to read it. it's a good read uh, well Dale that's it that's all okay we encourage you to like like share <laughs> go outside you might want to wear a scarf and help your community ex experience Christ maybe through some form of creativity today but that's it we'll talk to you later bye everybody. bye